let's stick on electability here. Um, you wrote, I think it was about a month ago, maybe, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, about how the Democratic Party establishment, there's actually some rumblings that they themselves are actually worried about Hillary's electability. Tell us about that. Well, that, that's actually fascinating. Thank you for asking about that aspect. You can see the, the ripple of something under the water when you see somebody like um, uh, oh, Biden, for example, emerging as a possibility. I think what, what's happening is that Biden is selling himself to insiders as if Hillary stumbles, I'm an insider-approved candidate that's available. And I think that's Biden's whole pitch. Um, will Hillary stumble? Or is there oppo research waiting in the wings that all the insiders know about and none of, the, none of us do that will sabotage her in the general election? Those are all possibilities. I don't know. By oppo research, by the way, I don't mean things that she has done wrong. I mean things that can paint her campaign badly enough that she can be made to appear to be wrong. I do think that, that Hillary Clinton as a person is a, a victim of an awful lot of uh, what um, the Harry Potter world calls wickedness on, <laughs> on that side of the world. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a fan of, of Hillary's very much, but the right-wing attacks on Hillary, are, a lot of them are, are absolutely ridiculous and sexist. So, I mean, that's not, that's not that that doesn't exist. It definitely does exist. I just personally don't want a, a corporatist center-right Democrat to be president. Uh, but that doesn't mean the, the, the attacks on that side are, are illegitimate. One thing that's yeah. really, uh, when, it comes, when it comes to Hillary, that, 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 that I think is, is something that really merits some discussion is the idea of Hillary's favorability versus Bernie's favorability, because Hillary has been around for so long, most, it's pretty much most people's opinion on Hillary isn't gonna be swayed a whole lot one way or the other. Let's talk a little bit about the numbers when it comes to Hillary's favorability. Well, Hillary's favorability is, is what? Uh, unfavorability is close to 50%, isn't yeah. it? I've seen numbers that are, that are in that range, and her favorabilities are down around 30. Now, it depends on 30s, 30-ish. Uh, it depends upon who you're asking, obviously. Her favorability among women is very high, and that makes a lot of sense. Her favorability among white men is something I've seen discussed, and those aren't terrific numbers, but you're... you're you have to look at context here. Is it is it is it context relative to a Republican candidate or context in the primaries? I mean, there's there's enough subgroups here to keep everyone confused. I think if you want to generalize about Hillary's problem, it's the statement that you made not too long ago, Matt. It's that you don't want another money bought that's my word, centrist Democrat running the country. Uh, your choices are that versus somebody like Trump or uh, uh, a Bush clone in the general election, but we're not in the general election yet. Hillary has been self-branded, the Clintons have been self-branded with money uh, ever since they left office. The, the stories of the speeches, the stories of the foundation, the stories of the uh, Saudi princes who give money to the foundation and then the State Department gives something to something, these are, even if they're just appearances, those are appearances that are very, very easy to avoid, and they, they don't appear to be strongly avoided. That is, there doesn't seem to be a rule that if you give money to the foundation, you are off of all of our other lists. I think that's the way the insiders play the game, and it looks like that's the way the, the Clinton as an operation, uh, the family foundation, the family as an operation plays the game. And I don't think that, that she's going to unbrand herself that way. If she gave a Al Gore, I will fight for you set of speeches, you know, in that, in that fake sort of strong delivery that Gore used, I don't think she could unbrand herself. I think that's a real problem. Speaking of insiders, um, the... One, one thing that, that's fairly clear is that the Democratic Party insiders, they do want Hillary, even with, uh, I mean, you know, like right now, there's some rumblings about her electability that we were talking about a second ago. But something that, that's a little definitely telling is the Democratic debate schedule. Um, there's actually only six debates scheduled 
There were, I believe, 15 in 2004. There was like 25 in 2008. Discuss kind of the, the shadiness of how the party is very much trying to shield Hillary from other candidates in these debates. Well, let's step back and take a look at who owns the Democratic Party. Yeah. Do the voters who are not people who perform work within the Democratic Party as volunteers, as holding offices within the party, do they own the party? I think they think they do. But in fact, the party regulars own the party. And that will be true of the Knights of Columbus as well. So does the party have the right to decide who its candidate is? Ultimately, you'd have to say in a logical world, yes. Not the voters, the party. So the party is deciding who its candidate is, and it's deciding that through a number of, way, a number of methods. One of those methods is the debate schedule. 